Hi guys, sorry about that. It's just one of those, those IT problems that I don't do IT. Um, poor Ben sat here pulling his hair a little bit. Like, what have we done? Okay, so hopefully you can all hear me. I hope you've got pictures. It would be nice to know that we're on. All right. Um, there's nothing worse than this thing that goes around around and says going live. Going, going. All right. So hopefully we're there. Okay. So good afternoon. Welcome to today's We're Working Wisdom. Um, so today we're going to do Simple Project, one of my batch run projects. A few of you have already put comments on. Carl wins out in the States coming out next week, so he will be in Texas. He's also doing a class at Nick Agar's studio. So if you're going over to that, enjoy yourself. Bob, have a fantastic time. Hope you get Frank out and get him down there. Okay, so have a great time. I'll see some of you when I come over and do Mid-Atlantic, which is a bit later on in September. Okay, so our project this afternoon, we're going to do Simple Little Hammer. Okay, as I said, I batch run these quite a lot over the years. So the bit of tape on the mirror allows me to pull it in and out because I haven't stuck this in yet. Two-piece project, but real simple. You can make them more elaborate. You can make them as simple as this. I used to make them more elaborate with fancy beads and everything on the handles, and people went, do you just do a plain one? Uh, I just make them plain. Okay, so quite a simple, easy little thing. Now, as I said, you do these as a batch run project. So I just turn around, picking up timbers and bits. So on the laid bed, I expect Ben's got that. That's good on the overhead. That'll look good. I have a plank of mature depth. You guys, if I lift up, you can probably see I've drawn some circles out. They look good. Okay. So normally if I'm doing this at home, we do something out of a plank. You could use offcuts. Plankwise, I've already cut off the bit for the handle. So that, I'm just looking at well on the camera where we are, would have been off of this section here on the board. So I rip that off. All right, I can put as many in as you like. You get the idea. Look down there. So I've got a square section before I machine it up. So cut those off. I've cut them to the length I want, which is nine inches. 230 millimeters for those English guys. Okay. So then having cut that off i can machine the board up both sides it saves so much time okay makes it quicker so this is machined i think to 21 mil thick um three quarters and a tad and a smidgen for the american people okay so we've got our, our thickness nice and equal and like i said makes it quicker then from there we can cut it out okay so we have our mirror handle and head. All right, real quick and easy in that aspect. Now, over the years, I've tried doing these numerous ways of different ways of attaching this to make it quicker. You obviously can't go putting a face plate on here and screw it on. A few of the guys in the States might be, what about hot melt glue? You can. Hot melt glue can grip quite well. I used to break, I reckon, one in 10 trying to get it back off the block that was holding it. OK, uh, maybe I'm not as patient. I don't know. But I used to do something when I'd done it. You know. So I started looking at things. So over the years, speeded things up. So we're going to bring our button jaws in. These have got on here a stacking turn stud. All right, so there's eight of. All right, I've got all eight in place. So we're going to put that on the lathe. OK, take the lathe speed down. We need long chuck key. That's paramount. So in here, I'm just looking at what we've got. What's the nicer side? That looks better for the back, I think. All right, so I'm already looking at the timber side now. And that's the advantage of machining this up. So our back face, more colour. It's going towards the back, into the chuck. I can then tighten this up. Open, and cut this quite accurately to a circle. Now, these are going to bite in and dig in a little bit. That's what I want them to do. I want it to hold it. I can also check at this stage, they run quite flat on the front. And like I said, that speeds up that immensely just to have there. So we're going to do the recess for the mirror first. So first thing we need to do really is find the middle. Let's just find a skew chisel. I want to make a dot. Right, I'm just going to get Ben to move. I think, Ben, can we bring the light in that's behind you a little bit? That one, all right? I'll get a bit brighter. It's a bit dark my side, actually. I moved it and probably pointed it to the ceiling too much. But if you can bring him this way and make sure you don't trip over, fantastic. That's better. I can see something now. Okay. All right, let's just grab my mirror. And bits. So we've made a dot in the middle. Well, mirror, the bit of tape, like I said, it allows me to pick it up. Uh, we can measure this. We have got a five-inch mirror. 
Okay, 125 mil. So I'm just going to put that back out of the way. And no, I'm not superstitious with mirrors anymore. Set my calipers. I've already got these set. Uh, let's just do a scribe line. Okay. Let's just give me a score line. Now, as I was kind of said, I've set things up, but let's just have a quick double check where we are. Okay. That's pretty good as a mark. So I've got a scribe line that I've just put in. Uh, down there. So someone's going to ask me in a minute, I think, what the timber is. This is tulip wood. Okay. Ben's got his hand up, so it wasn't that question then. <laughs> no. So um, the buttons. Yep. Have they got a six mil thread on the back? They're not buttons. They're not. Um, buttons. No, they're not buttons. Um, okay, let's just do while we're talking about it. Um, oh god, I might have to make Ben work this afternoon. They have a threaded back that fits in. All right. So Ben, in a minute, whilst I'm doing the hollowing, you can find a four mil Allen key. We'll take one out when we've done this stage. All right, that'd be great. I haven't got one on the wall behind me. Okay, so they are threaded a bit like you'd normally do with a button. Exactly the same. I'll take one off when we finish and we can have a look and hold it up. Because actually, they've got a tapered edge. All right, it comes to a knife point, if you like. It's not sharp, but it's designed to bite into the wood. The other nice thing, they're shallower than a normal button. So actually, they take up less space. So actually, I can use them as a primary holding device. So they're going to grip it and support it. Yeah, make a small dent, but they're definitely going to hold onto it. We've done other stuff that, where we can move it off center and all sorts. So why we'll take one off, we'll have a look. And then um, we've got a question from Frederick. He's asking um, if you don't have the um, the cold jaws, he's called them. The um, jaws or the cold jaws, yep. Yeah. Um, could a glue block work? You can, but if you use hot milk glue or anything like that, you've got to get it back off. And like I said, I've done them originally, and years ago I would have used hot milk glue. I have the snow, I've got to get hot glue, I've got to turn the glue gun back on at the right stage. Then I've got to get back off and I used to try and prise them off a little bit. And it would all, she hold them on too well and I would break one in, maybe one in ten, trying to get it back off. And it really became quite frustrating. So this is quicker and easier. And like I said, this is batch run type projects. That's giving you that scenario of, but yes, there are other ways you could probably get over it. And then Callum saying, um, when you go and do demos, do you always take your chisels from home because you know that they're going to be um, super When I go sharp. see the guys in the States or wherever I've been, so Bob P will vouch for, I take my tools with me. Um, I have to wrap them up nicely. The TSA obviously know who I am by now, I think. Um, I get little notes in my bag saying they've had a look. Uh, I have a nice level roll to bring a tape with me. Yes, because I want to use my tools. I get used to them. They're special, okay? If I use other tools, they don't work. I don't know how Carwin manages, but all right. So, no, I do try and take my tools with me if I can. All right. Okay. So, we've got our, our mark. All right. So, we've just done dividers onto there, into the middle. Look, we've got a square. That's quite easy. We'll pin them back up on the wall. We want parting tool, which is down here, just inside our line. I want to go about six mil deep. That'll do, I hope. How to take the bulk out, what we got on the wall at the moment. Now, moving things about a little bit in here at the moment, so I've had to reset the tools. So I've just gone bulk out, coming towards the middle. I need to drop the tool rest down in a second. I'm coming away from my line we just put in. That's better. So we have the flute right on its side, nine o'clock if you like. Coming out gently, stopping before I hit that edge. We're going to come back. And this is just quickly knocking the bulk out of there. Okay. I've now got to make sure, and I've got a little block of wood, that we're flat, we're miles off, okay? So we've got a low spot out towards the edge, which is good. We've got high spot in the middle. Just want to come down a little bit. I want to square it up. So I'm actually going over my scraper, my box scraper. We sort of get in there nicely. We can use this. Come to the outside edge. That'll give me a depth stop using my finger underneath.
gently working up. So I'm using my fingertips on my left hand, almost like a dash stop. On that little bit in the middle now. Gently coming out. So this fingertips working hard here. I'll block of wood in again just to see where we are. Still a little bit high in the middle there. Fingertip feels good. Now my block I can lay in here and it will give me a guide of if we look flat across the front. You guys can't quite see. I don't know if you'll see it on the overhead. I better shadow it a little bit. Okay. So I can use that. And at the moment, we've still got a little bit hollow there. We've got a high spot near the edge. We've got to get our mirror back in, in a second as well. So take a bit from there. Fingertips, what's going on? Small lump. Okay. Skewed chisel. Got to come up a bit. We've got my line I can see that I've left from the parting edge. Gently coming out. Gently coming down that edge. Point of the skew. Nice and flat on the toe rest at this stage. Now, I'm stood here. I've got these little things going from my brain now. Frederick, how can you not have a set of cold jewels? How can you not have a set of button jewels? Right, okay. At the moment, just putting my mirror in, that's just a little bit tight. Okay? If I push it in, it's going to get stuck, even with my bit of tape. So the bit of tape does do a good job. It allows you to hold it. Um, there's nothing worse than doing this stage and then getting it, pushing it in, and you haven't got the tape on the front. You can't get out. Um, the back of these occasion becomes quite useful as a all right. So, my skew would take a little bit more off on here. We don't want this fitting really tight, we need a gap around the edge of this. I want about a millimetre all the way round as movement. So, if the wood shrinks across the grain, it's not going to crack the mirror. That's not bad. I've got wiggle nail, okay. So I can move that. That's nice. We're not too deep. I'm just going to put my mirror back out the way. So we've got our flat. And again, we're just going to double check with the block. Fantastic. Okay. Something that fits inside there makes it so much easier. If you have a high spot in the middle when you come to glue it in, it rocks about and doesn't work. It actually doesn't glue nicely. Put the scraper back out the way. Oh. Different set of chuck jewels. So set up the other chuck. I've got a set of 38 mil O'Donnell's. So I'm just going to the centre and looking down through. That's good. Give me a guide of where we need to be. Our middle we can find easily. Now we've got to there. Create another swipe line. Okay. Down on the camera we can quite see. So I'm going to do that. We then need our little parting tool again. So now I'm cutting a little groove to the slight undercut. Handle level for this, we're coming onto the face of this, so we're getting in there. I've undercut very slightly. And while we're still doing it, let's have a quick double check now. I'll get the chuck in. Pick it up, hold it, got to bring the jaws in a bit and then I can expand them into there. That's going to go, that's fine. So what I'm checking there is will that chuck fit? There's nothing worse than getting to that stage later where you suddenly go, I won't go in there. Back to our gouge we use. So we've got that bowl gouge. We can take a little bit off the edge here. So I'm lining up the bevel, flute on its side. I can come down, that's good. And this is about just screwing up that outer edge. I can see where those little stackers are, how high up they come. Just check them around. That's good. Now we can roll this over, moving the ruler. If I drop the handle down, I can roll my right wrist. 
Jenny with the tip. Come from the high spot. Bring it over again. Okay. Have a quick look. So we've got a little bit of a bead edge. Got a join mark in the center. So change of contour. So my oval skew, just going to shear scrape that together. It's lighter than I can achieve from the gouge. Just tidying that up. And then we do a quick double check again with the mirror. <laughs> check our thickness on the edge here looks good. So we're going to put the mirror in and make sure that the straight step, whatever's showing here, doesn't look too proud. Okay. That looks nice. That's good. All right. Happy with that. So at this stage, we can take this out. But you haven't sanded it. No, we can sand it in a minute. So take that out. So quite a simple little thing to do. Mark-wise, let's come round. I think, Ben, if we were on the overhead, if I bring that up. Bring it over. See that little dot where my fingertip is? In there, that's all it dents in. Tiny little mark. There's one there. This is on a bandsaw surface. That real little step there. All right. So they haven't done too much damage. I don't know if I can do. Hadn't done them up very tight. That's good. Ben's been and found the Allen key. He's pointing at me now. See, I'm in trouble now. Take that off. Okay. So what we got here? We got the bolt in the middle. That little stacker thing. Oh, right. Bear with me before I drop the bolt on the floor. That kind of shape, all right? Hollow in the front, all right? If I take it off my finger, you'll be able to see it's got that hollow in. I turn it round there. You can see the shape of it more. Quite versatile. Now, the other nice thing with this, which I expect we go to camera... Yeah, okay, well done, Ben, camera free. I can actually stack them together. So... I can build them up by putting the bolt down through. So I can put three or four high if I wanted to. So for different projects, I can use it as a primary holding device where I don't want screws, glue, or anything else quickly to hold it. It can be really good. We did a thing a while back where we moved them off center on here as well. That can be good. So you can position them. So good to do there, right? So that will stack up. Let's just put that one just back in there. All right. Frederick obviously hasn't come back to say why well, he hasn't got a set of, of pal jaws or uh, no. Okay. So Frederick's got the smaller set. Okay. Um, a question popped up a minute ago. Would would these work with the wood jaws? Would they work on with the wood jaws? The wood plate. Jaws? You could do now. If you go with wood plates and do this, you've obviously got to be quite accurate on your circle and how you cut them out. Okay, because you're gripping on that wooden surface. But you could put a set of wood plates on. Cut a recess as a dovetail in the set of wood plates to bite into that as long as this is quite accurate as a circle. And that will grip all the way around. So, yeah, you could do. The other way you could possibly do is even fit maybe the stackers on a set of wood plates where you draw your holes, but you've got to be accurate on that line. You could do a score line. So there are ways of bending the rules of it, aren't they? <laughs> okay. All right. So, no drawing all jaws on, because this is going to allow us to put that in there. Okay. Nice and simple, that, isn't it? Do that up, expand it in, check it runs through. Fantastic. Bring that back in. All right, we've got a bit of shaping to do here now. So tip of the gouge, nice and gently. Don't want to come all the way across the back. It's pretty flat. Looking at my profile shape. Coming round, so I'm now looking at the top edge of it. Now we've got a nice big bead edge on this. I've got a join line in the centre. So I'm just going to go back to my skew. Needs a bit of a bear on it. Let's take the bear off. Drag it up. That diamond card should give me a bit more of an edge. That was good. Nice and lightly. Not using this dead flat. 
come up round. That's good. On the back here, got that dilemma because I know I'm going to get a little bit of bounce. Can't really see very much, is there? I said it'd be a little, okay? So it's not going to bounce so much. That's actually pretty flat. So do I really need to skim that? No. It's the advantage of actually playing in this up makes it so much quicker to make. So it can be good just to go with that. We'll bring this curve around. What I can do on here, you might want to add, and I did on the other one, a small line. They've got to go to a spindle gouge. The bowl gouge is going to have too big a tip. So we're using the tip of this to come round right on its edge. Gently got to come back the other way, so we've got to find our line. There it is. We could do something is a big bit there. Come back the other way. We can put a bead in. Just skimming that flat. Let's just see how my bead looks. On there, I think you can see that looks good. Got two in line. Just in there, blend the contours together. So quite quick and easy to do that. Let's put a few things back out of the way. A brise of paper. So we've got some 150. Let's make some room. Oh, bring the stay put hose in there. Take our speed down. Let's put the air on to get the extractor running. Sand. Those O'Donnell jewels are going to be really good access just to come in here. In behind to get my fingers in there. Fun's just realised camera two and one are just going to flash off. That's good. Go on, Ben, you get there. So, that means I've been on air for half an hour already. Oh my God. So fingertips I can get in the back, bring up round, do our bead, shouldn't need too much, we rested the bevel nicely with the back of that gouge. No to fit with this being Sherlock Wood, the bits I've really got to look at, and grain section there, not too bad, could do this scenario, why not put the chuck on quite firmly, I can put Live in reverse, just bring it around. Then we'll do your question in a sec when we got the extractor up, I think. All right. So by running this in reverse, pushes the fibres back up. There. See or something just on the edge of those. See what's going on. Put the switch back over. Now that's one five. I'll do 240. Coming right round and again, like I said, with those O'Donnell jewels means I can stand in one stage. So you've got that access. Look on our bead a bit. Really just in the corner edges. So we've just done a two four. We're gonna go rotary pad sander. Okay, so this will give me a better finish. Again, I can get right round there near those shoes. Gently pull that round, make sure it spins. Let's have a look. So we've gone from 2 4, we'll go up to the 400. Better. I want that again in a second. Just going to go 400 grit hand to do with that bead is. Double check what we've got. Then we'll just go back over there. Just getting that edge. 100 mil chuck would have been a bit nicer for those. 
Okay, good. Just going to do the split. So I've just taken the speed up. I think this is the joy of doing a live video. The room's nice and clean. I know those shavings are up of what we've been using. That's good. All right. Okay. Ben, what have you got? Um, so a couple of questions. Um, first one uh, from Hodgepodge. He's asking, would drilling the handle hole uh, while the side was flat and not beaded help for the um, stop okay, the drill? Okay, so I know tomorrow. where you're heading. So if we drill the handle hole first, the chances are you'll get break out on the edge that's coming towards you whilst you turn it. Just splinter it off a little bit. It isn't impossible. And yes, you might want to, okay? But we're going to drill the handle hole. All right, just putting the sealer on, on here now, just trying to make sure I get it into that cut edge. Into there, I get Ben's have a question, which I know he's good. He's got a couple fighting to get in there, nearly there. That's good, just gently turning around. So, this is our cellulose sealer. I've still got a couple of other tasks to do to this. Yep, okay. Uh, so, a question from the gentleman Wood Turner. Right. He's asking, uh, would a vacuum chuck work? Would what, sorry? A vacuum chuck. You could do, but that's expensive. <laughs> a vacuum chuck? Um, you could do a vacuum chuck. It'd be nice to do. It'd be quick and easy. Um, vacuum chucks in the UK never really caught on. Not like you guys have got in the States. A um, few of the guys I visited out there all got vacuum chucks. Right? Over here, very few and far between. I do have vacuum chuck at home, okay? Um, right, so at that stage, we just put a coat of sealer on, so that's that cellulose sand and sealer. Next thing we've got to do is drill that hole. So for that, we've used this sort of thing before, just a simple drilling block. So this is turned to fit into the banjo. I've left square section. If you start looking at it, it's starting to look a bit like Swiss cheese on different places because I've used it for different projects. Okay, so we can drop it in. I've got my drill, which hold it come out of. Not that one, not that one. Must be up there. Okay. Need to, when I set this up, ensure that, and I'm just getting a tailstock centre. So when I've made it, I'm making sure now, I'm just bending down so I can sight it. Okay. I'm looking at the centre tip is level with the tailstock, height-wise, up and down. Okay. So, this one actually done quite well. It sits straight onto the top of the banjo, and I know my height is cracked, okay? The other good thing I can use occasionally with these would be a Jubilee clip. So I put on, or a collar. So we even make a collar these days that we use on the table. Oh, it's not up on there. It's over here now, look. So as I said to you, things are being moved around in the room a little bit. So you could have something like a collar. You could have a face plate set up if you wanted with a bar that fits on the top, but you can make up a drilling post. We want some way of being able to set the height. Now, at this stage, Ben, I think we'll go to camera two, which is where you are. Good. The grain direction here is coming down. Now, we always used to drill these and grain in the mirror head here. But if you push it in, it splits the fibres here on that narrow little band on the front. Nothing more annoying when you get to that complete stage. You've made the handle, you've made the head, you've got to put the mirror in, you do that. You push the handle in and it splits here. So now I've started to put them cross grain. So grain direction running across on this. Okay. This has got a splash of set. What have we got in here? Dark a bit there. Let's have that there. So I'm already now looking at that grain and deciding where I want to put do it. I want to lock the spindle somewhere. Now I've just locked the spindle. Get a bit of wiggle. Let's go to the spindle lock lock on the, the back of the headstock. We'll screw that in. Go remember to undo it though. That's better. No play now. My grain is a bit high here as a colour feature. No, there's nothing to stop me undoing it on the O'Donnell jaws and bringing that up. That's better. So I've lined that up now. Then Bringing this in, just sighting where I want to be. I'm now sighting down the top. Now, let's just make sure we've locked off the banjo. <laughs> I've been there, done that. Sighting where my drill's going, how it's going in. I want to get it straight. So, 
looking down the drill if you like from overhead that's good that there that's there look up look that off call this drill bring it back a little bit more okay now if i come in i can look at how much i've got on the back of the collar which you guys probably won't see back on here how much drill clearance i've got how much color i've got so okay Put there, that to there, set up here. Run the drill the right way, that's better. It's nice and slow on the initial start, not too much push. Got the lip and spur tip in there, that's good. A little bit more. Right. Be patient with that bit. Let's have a look now. Should be able to. I can get my pencil through here, okay? Now I've got a guide of my, on my pencil how deep the rubber bit is. Just a quick look. And how do you know? Do you, you've gone, okay, that's a good guide. Mm, all right. We could go a little bit more. Okay, good. So we're probably in about half inch now. Let's just see what we've got there. Now we'll take our drilling block out. And uh, that one there, bring it up. Okay. I think, Ben, if you go to the overhead, I probably can fish this out, actually. We can show the guys just as well. There's nothing I know. There's one other task I want to do. Okay. So we've got a nice, clean hole there. Now, what I was getting at earlier, if you do this beforehand, you can get weak fibers on one edge here. Like this splinter out a little bit as you try and turn it. It'll break off just a tiny bit. If you drill it after, you hope to get a nice, clean finish. And the drilling bit can cause issues. I could take off the flap off the top with the 400. We want that out of the way. That in there. Oh, bring that in. Just going to look at where we are now. We could have one there. One there, a couple of little V's, so this is point the skew. Let's take the speed up a bit. Put a burn line in. All right. That's really effective. Uh, easy with tools, All right, with a wire. <coughs> That's just, <laughs> now, in a minute, we might be interesting a bit. I don't know where the smoke detector is in the room now. Ben's going to tell me we're going outside in a minute now, okay? So we've got that. I need to do a little bit of four, just to do anything on there. Let's have a feel, see what we've got. Now, I know we put a coat of seal on. Jeanette Colwyn puts it nice and thin in the big jam jar. There's nothing to stop me now. I've done one, and we've let it dry. Another one on. Okay. Put our sealer back out of the way. Blue paper towel is there. Spin dry to try and get out the black groups. Okay. So the black really just adds a little bit of decoration. Okay. So we've got to there, we've got our edge. Just sealed at the moment. You could do a wax if you wanted. Okay, first bit done. Let's change the chuck. Oh, I'll put them down on the floor so it's out the way. Ring centers. So we got drive one, tail stop one, put the extractor back a little bit. Let's look at what we've got as handles. Got a selection. I want a nice easy afternoon. We have that one. Why ring centers? Um, definitely on the tailstock, it won't split the fibers down here, which is really good. Really important from my point of view. We need to come back with our tailstock. I'm right on the edge of the knockout point on there. So I can bring that up. That's good. I can sight visibly do I look central. Not bad there. Nice and firm. Then we can add a bit of pressure. A 
Okay, so bear with your gut. Um, so Jim's asking, where where did you get the beveled mirror? Beveled edge mirror. So this is who, Frederick? Uh, no, Jim. Jim, okay. Depends where you live, Jim. Um, UK, I know Hobbycraft used to do some. We used to sell some years ago. Turner's Retreat might do some. In the States, Craft Supplies USA. All right. So a few different places I know of, and I do have to hunt around occasionally for them. All right. Depends what's on the market and what's available. We used to sell mirrors, oh, 15 years ago, but we'd have to buy a 1,000 mirrors of one size at a time. Yeah. They, like, they take, they last a bit of a while. Okay, so what am I looking for? What do we want? Let's have a roughing gouge. Is it any good? Did you champagne with these this week, Ben? Okay. Not bad. Okay. So we're about quarter of an inch below centre height. Working centre outwards, we have a runoff edge. So come along and drop the handle down. All right? We've still got square section. Some of you are going to go, you could put longer tall rest on. Yeah, I could. Some of you won't have long tall rest, so we've got to move it along. Reset. Check how things are. Yeah, that's good. Now I can go back and forwards. I've lost those corners. That's good. And we want straight cylinder. A little bit of a flat there. Okay. So this is one of these uh, ideal projects for Christmas. Oh no, I've mentioned it. Christmas, oh my God. Has Colwyn started making Christmas stuff yet, Colwyn? We, do we know, Ben? You don't know? Okay. For those of you who might not know, Colwyn, Colwyn does Christmas in, when's he start? End of August, isn't it? Uh, okay. So, I'm sorry. Um, guys that know me well enough, now I've got a sense of humour. Right? So, on here, we've got our drill bit that we've used to drill the hole. We can use that to give us a guide of what we want to make. So, I'm using the, the shank of the drill, setting up a set of calipers. At the moment, I've gone just a touch over. Too big is better than too small. Beading tool. What have we got? Square one. Channel stuck end is going to be the bit that goes into. Now, I've just done a couple of cuts there. We've left a lump bit on the end, which you might just see. And bring the calipers up. there nearly slowing the push down now and wiggling a little bit just on it now okay so at this stage as I said I've left a little lump here okay that's adding a little bit of strength we can easily knock it off later that's also this tailstock center is bigger than the 10 mil we've got for our drill okay we need to shape it a little bit. I'll do that in a minute. Go back to our roughening gouge. Left foot's outside the headstock, so a long way back with that. I can angle our roughening gouge a little bit. So I've got the bevel in behind it, pushing it along. So I yeah, you can see nicely, I think, on the overhead there. I'm just having to look up, see what's going on, so you guys can see. I didn't see my angle. If I was square, I'd be here. I'm actually tilting. Got that bevel in behind. I wouldn't rough down like that from a square. I tend to prefer straight. But that 45 is quite nice there. Come along. Getting near to where we want to be there. Ideally for the handles, nice straight grain material is good. Oh, we've got to move the tour rest. Feeding tool. That to do a shape. I've got a little flat I can feel where I've just put my finger. As I said earlier, you could have whatever you want. Handle shape. Okay, good. 
that's come up a little bit. Channel stock end at the moment is a bit bulbousy down here. Skew chisel. Right, so my box making skill work nicely down there. Shapes a little bit more. Let's come up a touch. I was going to run back down to the other end, but I kind of hmm, okay. We've got a little bit there we can lose, and we're blending in now to where we've got the 10 mil cut. Let's come down here now. So I've turned the skew over. This is my hollow grind side now. Gently coming round. Give it time to cut. That's not bad. A little bit of noise, I can feel got that little knot I know of in there. Gently coming up. Okay, let's have a look. See what we got. There's the knot. It's amazing how you can feel something like that just going over it. So what's going on here? Okay, got a lump there. The hand back in with support it. A bit thinner on the tail stop. Noble skew's nice for there. Glides along that rest easily. Okay, that looks good. Head stuck in. Extend that a little bit. Don't want to go too thin there. Let's just do the bulk of the sanding, then we've got to play around with the tailstock end of this. Just set things up so tool rest back out. I'll put the extractor on, take the speed down a little bit. There we go. This is our 150. Back to bride that works nicely with this. Gives me something to hold as well. So by doubling it up, two four. Probably could have started with the two forty, but oh well, I'll go to four hundred now. Then we'll get that out in a minute. Then it never happens to any of them. I bet you. That was playful. Can you see it in the extractor yet? Okay. He's looking. I don't know. At this rate, I'm going to end up with elastic bands on my wrist and a hole for the abrasive to hold it on there. It's just dawned on Ben. We had a guy on a turning course years ago on a chair course. That's what we had to do for him, wouldn't it? So 400 grit. Okay. Still got the 400 on the rotary. It's a bit excessive, I know, but it's going to go around. That's good. A bit of pressure that side. Okay. Why is the knots where I want to put my two lines? Okay, go on. I'm on my way better for this, all right? We'll put them down there. Look. So we could have a couple of lines on there. So we're just done. Point the skew again. Take the speed up. A couple of burn lines just add a little bit of interest. Okay. What, they've all admitted to losing a brazier paper? Come on, then, what have you got? I'm sorry. So we've got a question from Mark here. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, the gentleman with Tanner. He's saying, um, would you ever use one of Colwyn's skews 
or would you burst into flames if you used it? A what? Colwyn Wayscoot? I do occasionally, okay? <laughs> I've even seen Colwyn use mine. But shh, <laughs> all right, that'll start rumors. No, we do occasionally. We do occasionally trade and swap over. I mean, you know, what did I use Colwyn Scoot for the other week? What did we? No, I didn't open the tin with it. <laughs> oh, come on, that's no. So, no, we do occasionally play with All right, sorry. I'm in trouble now. Okay, so just taking that little lump off the end, we're inside that ring center. So I've just added a tiny chamfer, just feeling with my fingertips to see what's going on. Okay, I'm going to make sure we've lost that. All right, so we've got the end of our handle. We want to check, obviously, it's going to fit into here. Is it fit enough? Okay, we could possibly take a little bit off that. So back into that ring center, which is where this is so important because no splits. No cracks, nothing opened up. Single tail point centre will have cracked that open by now with the pressure put in, and it will split. All right, so that ring centre is good for that. So I can go back into my skew. All right, it's just I'm being quite hard on the bevel now, just to see what's going on again. Ring drive people are often shocked that that actually works at the drive centre. Same shape, bit of grips. Okay, good. So my handle fits in there. I've got a tiny little bit of fluff. But I think we're going to live with it. Okay. Back out. 400, I think we can just do a tiny bit. Well, I've just fluffed up that surface. Okay. Sealer, let's make a little bit of rum. It's getting like home now. So the cellulose sealer, brush on, deliberately leaving the bit on the end where we're going to glue it in. All right, so no sealer right up on that edge. I can see where I've got, that'll do. That looks quite nice. I'm all right, Ben. Right, what have you got? Um, Frederick saying, would you ever use a hard wax oil on the handle? Because you could use a, you a can lot. use whatever you like as a finish. Okay, um, you could go with a spray lacquer. Um, I've always done them with something that's quick and easy. So at the moment, we've just done the sealer. Just sealing what we've got there. Got a bit of a rough patch on that end, which obviously is where I've gone over my skew. So let's just cut those back. Now we've raised it with the sealer. Only thing that, obviously going back to Frederick's question a bit there, go careful on how far you come up here. You don't want too much oil on that bit where you're going to glue it together, or that will stop it working. Okay, so on there, this end I've got a little thing, a little bit loose at the moment as a joint. So I've just done a couple of force cuts with a skew chisel, a couple of flares, so that will tighten up, that will also give the glue something to go in. We can, now jump in my gun, let's take a little bit. If not, we're going to be there a long time. Come back down to there. Check our tension. No, uh, tip my skew. There it goes. Oh. It was played for, I promise, Ben. All right. Okay, we need to clean that end up, that last little bit. Take our drive out. That's that ring drive. Safer, one of my things that I love using at home. Call it Chuck. I'm going to clean up the end of these. All right, take the speed down. This is the 400 grit. 
Better do. We can see he's getting a little bit of dust off. Bit too low. Okay. Nice thing about doing this on the live is more controllable speed wise. So I'm now running at 420 RPM. Soft pad, even if I touch it, that's good. 400 grit, I can just literally do a hand weight. Pull it down in the grain direction. Uh, just feeling what's going on. Checking our shape. Don't want it sharp. I've got quite a nice rounded edge on there. That's good. We want a little bit of sealer. We can wipe off the excess. Okay. Pigtail. Nice and firm. Light or dark coloured wood. So I think it's quite dark, this. So we're going to go stitch them up. Brown. Want a bit more speed. So I want about 1,800. Now, made sure when I put that pigtail in nice and firmly, really throw it in. You could tap it in with a block of wood. Which we could do with a block of wood. Pigtail's got, or the mop's got lots of brown on it. I can tell I'm getting a staining on here. Let's cut a bit back. So if I get too much compound, I can remove some. We can work down that. Then I've got my finger over that bit. I want to try and keep with no polish on. We come around the end. Nice thing with working with the mops, change direction, so I'm not getting parallel ring marks like we would on the live. That looks good. First bit done. Careful, it doesn't fall off. Gonna do well on the mirror head now. So what's the brown doing? Actually, a little bit as a grain filler. It will darken this of the wood a little bit as well. That's not such a bad thing. If I had a very pale wood, so sycamore, maple, or maybe American cherry, might go with the white. Get round our beads. You can see how I can change the angle. Approach angle, I can vary what I'm doing. Come around the edge, got a little brown line just losing, that's good. Okay, first bit done. I'm going to change them up, we're going to go loose, unstitched in that car Uber wax. A little bit there. Before I go with the trickier bit to remove it off it. Let's see how much kind of was already on the mop. There was a lot of brown when I put it on there, which I hadn't realised. So, hence the fact of the scrap block with a bit of colour. I don't want loads on this. Why do this as a polish on this? Um, I find it holds its shine nicely. It's hard wearing, stays glossy. Okay, you got to remember this is going to be regular pickup put down. Roderick had that question, something like a hard wax oil. Yeah, that will be good because that will obviously take damp hands. All right. Which I've never thought about till today. That's a worry now, isn't it? All right, so we're working around. A little bit more, just taking the speed up just a tiny bit. Want to be about 1800. Too much speed with this, you can burn the mop on the wood. You create a brown line. So under 2,000 is a good speed for working on a six-inch mop. Let's 
speed down a bit. It'll fly around the edge nicer, make it more controllable. Okay, good. So I'll flip that to there. Get a knockout bar, we can drive that out. Take our mop off. Let's reach down, find our mirror. See how things come. So this stage, you can obviously easily glue your handle in. Right, that pushes in nicely. By doing the drilling block, everything lines up nice and straight with the center of your mirror. All right, and that's, like I said, the drilling block I've had for a while. You can imagine, got the same lathe at home, so I can set it up, do them, get them done and out of the way, and know I'm not matching around with my heights. I'm mirroring. Okay. Um, so, I don't know, they're quite a nice, simple project any granddaughter would love. Okay. I said they've got long hair. I want to do their hair. If you don't know anyone that does it, maybe they guide the planes in at the airport. You can, okay. So, right. Ben say you're laughing. You should know me by now, Ben. Oh, come on. So, uh, you can just, you know, I've seen them, right? So, if you know anyone in the TSA, you could give them one of those and say, Jason really does. Okay. Now I am in trouble. All right. So, hopefully, giving you a few ideas. Simple little project. All right. Let's move the mirror before I drop it. Okay. And I'm sorry for my sense of humor. Right? It would be boring otherwise, wouldn't it? So, Simple little project that you can make using some scrap material, nice handle, maybe an heirloom for years. Like I said, you can go more elaborate with the handle. I used to do lots of beads and shape on the end here, but can you make them just simple? Okay. Um, this is something over here I make. Uh, what do I get? £20 for these, start to finish, including the mirror. Not a lot of money for what they are, so they have to be quite quick. So you can see how maybe adapting... Those stackers on the button jaws make it quick and easy to hold. Machine the board up, cut the handles. Oh, wow, really quick and easy to do. All right, come on then, Ben. Uh-oh. Cliff's just got a question in here. He's saying, um, what glue would you use to stick the mirror? Just a PVA, okay? If you get your fit so it's nice, all right? Even those little ridges will help them swell those fibres, but that will work plenty, all right? Don't go using anything like polyurethane or anything. It'll grows out the handle and you've got to clean it off. <laughs> All right, um, so just a PVA will work fine. To put your mirror in, use a contact adhesive. Over here, we have Evo Stick. So I apply that to both the mirror and the wood. Let it touch dry, put the two together. That holds it and sticks it in place, okay? That's an important one, all right? So your Evo Stick is good for the going there. That gap is so important. If you don't allow a gap and the wood swells, it will bow the mirror and crack it. But you can't be superstitious if you're going to start using mirrors, okay? There's nothing, not seven years bad luck. Can't be. I'm getting worried now. Seven years? Okay, so hopefully a fun little project to do. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Um, I'll put it out the way for a minute. I don't want to drop it. I think Ben's up to date on his questions. He's done well with those. A few questions, so I knew it was good. Sorry for the delayed start. I mean, I just like, oh. you give it computers, Ben. No, okay, all right. So we, we get by. So like I said, if you're in the States, you're in uh, anywhere near Texas, you can go to a photo with Cohen, okay? You can charge him $5 per photo, okay? Bob and P and the gang have a fantastic time down at Nick's. And like I said, I will be over in a few weeks to do other show at Mid-Atlantic, all right? Next week, because I know there's a pre-record on Thursday, I can't remember what it is. Next week, I've got a magnetic mushroom. That's got you intrigued. It's a fun, fun project, I promise. Okay. All right. So we will see you next week. All right. Bye then.